Hello children, Mr. Ryan is back, but this time not with maths. Today we are going to check out something different, something that is not, you cannot see it nowadays during this time of the lockdown. Things or modes that you use or you used to use when you used to come to school. For example, you used, some would walk to school, some would take a toto rickshaw, some would take a cycle rickshaw, some would take a pool car, some would use a bus, and others would use a train. So all these are transportation modes. We used to use these to travel from home to school, and from school back home. So today we are going to see how transport or the transport system has changed from what it was before and what it is today. So therefore we move into this chapter called changes in the transport system and we are going to discuss three modes of transport as you see in the board here, three modes of transport, that is land, water and air. We are going to discuss about what kind of transport we had then, means in the past, and what we have now. Similarly with water and air, what we had then and what we have now. So we are going to see that, how these changes have taken place over the years. So first we are going into land travel or traveling by land or on land. Now when you look at these pictures, they are familiar to you because they are there in your textbook. Now these two pictures show us that there is, this is a bullock cart, that is a tonga. So we see that in the past people used bullocks, horses, mules, donkeys and camels to pull carts and transport people from one place to another. They also used to use these modes of transport to take goods or things from one place to another. But what about now? Now we see that there is a change. Now we see that people are using bicycles, cars, buses, trains. So they, the modes of transport have changed and people are now using these bicycles, cars, buses, trains to travel themselves and also to transport goods from one place to another. Now train travel is cheap compared to others and we have a very good network of railways in our country. Trains in the earlier times when people used to use them, now also, they used to be driven by steam engines, but now in the modern age people are driving the trains using diesel or electric engines. And then we have two kinds of trains. We have passenger trains and we have goods trains. Now when you travel from one place to another, you use a passenger train. But when whatever we need to eat, coal, we don't need, but need for uh, using in different factories and industries, but rice, wheat, all these goods, when they have to be transported, the people use goods trains to transport these things from one place to another. And then we see that when we are coming to school, we use local trains. People traveling in the metropolitan cities, they use metro trains to travel from one place to another. And we are lucky because we are in Kolkata. In Kolkata, we can see trams which are used for public transport that move on metal tracks in the middle of a street. 
So these are the changes in the land transport system over the years. Moving on to the next mode of transport that is water travel. Then in the past, here as the picture shows, we have a raft, we have a boat. Now these were what people used in the past to travel by means of these things on water. So people used waterways, canals, rivers and they used rafts and boats which took them from one place to the other. And they were quite cheap. Boat services were used across many big rivers where there were no bridges. So they used the waterways, the rivers, the canals and they used boats and rafts to move themselves and their goods from one place to another. But what about today? Today you see people are using big ships, they are using ferries, they are using luxury liners which are now carrying goods and people to very far off places. So there has been a change. And we see many places on the banks of the Ganga and the Brahmaputra, they have very good ferry systems. So people can travel across the waters to different places. Next we come to the third mode that is air travel. When we think about in the past, people did not use this mode at all. They did not have aeroplanes, so they did not travel by air. But today, now, we see that aeroplanes are being used very, very widely. It is the fastest means of transport. Many people can go long distances in a very short time. And we have domestic and international airlines. So in domestic, the aeroplanes fly inside the country. And in international, we are flying from here to different countries around the world. And we see that travel by air transport is very fast. But it is also very expensive. So, air transport nowadays is being used extensively, very much, very widely because it is the fastest means of transport and it takes a very short time to travel long distances. Now we are coming to a section which is very relevant or very, very important for us today. We are talking of traffic on the road. Since we already spoke about a lot of vehicles on the road, cars, buses, cycles, auto rickshaws, uh, trams. So, road transport has been increasing day by day. More and more people are buying cars, more and more people are using them. So, it has become very, very commonly and frequently used transport system. By using the system of transport, what has been the result? Well, number one, traffic jams. Now, in many big cities, this is very, very common because there are so many vehicles on the road that we have traffic jams. Secondly, the fuels used by vehicles produce harmful gases when they burn. When a car travels, then it burns fuel and the gases that come out as smoke mix with the air and they cause air pollution. This, this is not good. Polluted air causes diseases such as asthma and bronchitis. But we have to you, we have to reduce. We have to reduce the traffic and the pollution on the road. So therefore, People must use other means of public transport such as buses, local trains, metro trains. 
Now previously people used to use their own cars to bring their children to school. Today we have the system of pool cars where one car brings different children from different homes to school. So instead of coming in 10 different cars, the students are coming in one car. So we have reduced the number of vehicles on the road. Travelling on the road leads to yet another important factor. And that is when we are on the road, we must think about the safety on the roads. Safety of us and the safety of others on the roads. So to be safe on the roads, we must do these things. What are they? Wear helmets when riding a bicycle or travelling on a scooter or motorcycle. So helmets are very much necessary. Even the police and the government wants people to wear helmets when they are driving on the road. Obey all traffic rules. We see these rules are for our safety. So we must obey all the traffic rules. When we are travelling in a car, we should use seat belts. Why? Because if there is an accident, then we will get saved. And we should also cross the road at zebra crossings. Only when the traffic light is green. So there you see the traffic light. It has three colors. Red, amber and green. When the traffic light shows green, then we should use the zebra crossings to cross the road. And finally, never drive fast. Because when you drive fast, you don't have control over the vehicle and there may be an accident. So, an important note we can remember because it's very important. Walking and cycling, these two things are the best means of transport. Why do we say that? Because it helps us in three ways. It gives us good exercise. It keeps us healthy. And it reduces pollution. So whenever you are traveling short distances, you can always walk. Or you can use a cycle. Because then you will have good exercise. You will keep healthy. And you will reduce pollution in the air. Now the last note that I want to tell you here is that we already spoke about the fuels that are coming out of the cars, the smoke that comes out of the cars by burning the fuels. Now diesel and petrol are the common types of fuel that are used in vehicles but causes a lot of pollution. Now the government came up with a new kind of fuel that is compressed natural gas or CNG. And this is used very much nowadays in vehicles and it causes less pollution. So, what have we learned today? Just to summarize what did we learn today. We learned the changes in the transport system from what it was and what it was, what it is now. So, we have checked out three modes of transport. Travelling by land, on land, travelling on the water and travelling by air. So, over the years, things have changed. On land, we used bullock carts and tongas. Now, we are using different types of vehicles, which are faster, takes us faster to our places. On the water, we have used rafts and boats. Nowadays, we are using ferries luxury liners, ships and in the air transport system in the past people never used aeroplanes but today people are using aeroplanes very much because it is the fastest mode of transport and then we have seen that what are we to do when we are taking our vehicles out on the road how should we drive the vehicles what are the rules that we should follow so that we are safe on the road? And finally, we see that the types of fuels that were used 
and which caused a lot of pollution. And now, what is being used? The CNG gas, which is causing less pollution. Thank you, students.